and then uh, we'll get the party started there, Jackson. Absolutely. All right. So uh, let me see. Let me know when you guys can hear us, guys. All right. Okay. You want to create a stunning website. I've already done it. Okay. Hmm, they said they cannot hear us for some reason. They can't hear us? Okay. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Let me know when you guys. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So we got, we got, okay, we got confirmation. That, uh, the folks are good. Can... Uh, yeah. Good? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Sorry about the uh, technical mishaps, guys. It's amazing that we've been doing this for over four years, and uh, each time it's, uh, it never changes. <laughs> <laughs> it never changes, Jackson. You know? It's Google, Google Hangouts. Is, I, I swear it's one of the buggiest pieces of software I've ever yeah. used in my life. It, man, I wish this Google Hangouts would be half as reliable as Dogecoin, man. You know, Doge has <laughs> always been like in the top, you know, 50, it's always in the top since, you know, I've been in crypto. So, you know, I wish Google Hangouts <laughs> is that reliable, you know. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, guys, this is Ty Zen. My name is Ty Zen. I'm the senior technical analyst here at uh, cryptocurrency.market. And with me today, uh, we have a very special guest, right? Uh, we have Jackson Palmer, the founder of Dogecoin. Say hello, Jackson. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, yeah. this is my first time. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hey, I'm broadcasting from Dallas, uh, Texas, uh, the greatest uh, you know country in America, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where are you broadcasting from today, uh, Jackson? Yeah, I'm in uh, California or in San Francisco. So right okay. in the heart of kind of where all crypto and tech and all of that meets. Oh, okay. So you were surrounded by the big boys, right? Literally surrounded. Like, yeah, you're surrounded I, by Google, Facebook, you know, yeah. Apple. Have you been inside the Apple, the new Apple headquarters? I haven't. No, it's only been it's only been open for a very short period of time. But I have some friends there, so. Oh yeah. Maybe one day. Yeah. Are you going to uh, go into their uh, new headquarters when you take a tour over there with the Dogecoin T-shirt on or anything like that, <laughs> and, and 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 show them what you did? Huh? I'll, have to, yeah. I'll have to dig out the Dogecoin merch. I, I have yeah. it all like packed away somewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, um, I brought you on because you know um, there's been a lot of uh, talk about uh, uh, you know Dogecoin from uh, you know bite sized Bitcoin and other mm -hmm. channels. You know, uh, your number one fan uh, and. <laughs> He thinks I dislike him, but I don't dislike him at all. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. He says, man, the guy blocked me, man. He, he, he doesn't like me anymore, you know? And I'm like, I don't know, man, but I'll be interviewing him soon. I'll ask him, you know? So, so let the record reflect that Jackson Palmer, <laughs> the uh, founder of Dogecoin, does not hate, you know, uh, Mr. I, I have nothing against bite size. Uh, what a bite-sized Bitcoin. Yeah. No, um, Mr. Bitcoin uh, Lambo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm totally fine with what he does and everything. It seems cool. Like, uh, what was happening? So my Twitter account just gets spammed. Like, honestly, like every day I've got like millions of these bots that just spam me saying cheap Bitcoin, cheap Dogecoin. When will you make the price of Dogecoin higher? And it just like it gets to me. So um, when there, he did some video. And um, I guess there was like a whole bunch of these bots that picked up the video and started yeah. just spamming me. So I just started saying block, 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 block. Because if I don't block, then I can't, um, my notifications get all mixed up and I can't actually respond to people who are asking me like serious questions. So that's what happened. <laughs> okay. So here's a serious question. Okay. Here's a serious question, Jackson, right? Okay. Right. When. Is the price of Dogecoin going up? When are you gonna make the price of Dogecoin going up? <laughs> Let's set the record straight for everyone, man, in, in crypto land, man, so that they stop bugging you, man. Set it's the always, record straight. Like, the, the, the Dogecoin price has always been the same. One Doge equals one Doge. That's that's <laughs> it, man. <laughs> okay. So hey, so for the people that are new to crypto, right? Uh -huh. Um, 
Talk about your background first before we go into uh, Dogecoin. You know, I know we're joking about it and stuff, but let's mm -hmm. let's get serious here, man. Like, what was your background, right, before you even got into cryptocurrency? Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah, I've always been very technical um, and into kind of building PCs and doing all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I, I, I kind of, I read about Bitcoin back in like 2011, 2012. Um, but from memory, I was at my, I was, on vacation, I was at my parents' place, and they had really bad internet. Um, and so I like started, you know, I downloaded Bitcoin, installed it, and it was like it's going to take, you know, five days to sync this ten gigabyte blockchain. I'm like, screw this, this will never work. Um, <laughs> and so, that was my first uh, thing with Bitcoin. But um, my background was originally in marketing, actually, like technical product marketing, and um, and then I'd kind of been in the meme space, I guess, for a while. Um, I built a site which was kind of a precursor to Giphy, which is called gifbase.com. Um, and so it's kind of like a GIF repository, um, probably the first tagged GIF repository for people to share GIFs. Um, so I did that, and so I, ha I was well kind of acquainted with like meme culture and uh, everything with that. Um, and then eventually I got back into cryptocurrency when you know Litecoin was out and all that stuff was coming out, and uh, Dogecoin was born. <laughs> And uh, hey, you know when uh, what what inspired you uh, to to build? I mean, well, okay. So before we talk about Dogecoin, right, like, what was your first thoughts when you heard about bitcoins, blockchains, cryptocurrencies, and all that stuff? And what year did you get into it? Yeah. So the first time I saw it would have been 2011, 2012. Um, and back then, I thought this thing's never going to work because where I was from, Australia, internet access is just terrible in Australia. So um, you know, it's gotten a little bit better, but um, Back then, you know, we were on some, you know, really crappy like ADSL line there. Or, or syncing a blockchain just it just didn't make any sense. Um, I like the idea of decentralized technology. Like I was into kind of doing, I was playing around with like web RTC and stuff back like then, around you know peer to peer stuff, and I was very into BitTorrent. Um, but I just didn't see how it was going to work for Bitcoin. I was obviously very wrong, um, and. You know, I think since then, like after that, uh, in 2013, um, Litecoin started coming out, and then Feathercoin came out. Feathercoin was actually the thing that got me back into um, crypto, um, and it was mostly because um, Feathercoin took, uh, well, it took Litecoin. I think it forked Litecoin, but it had fast block times, um, and it had its focus was on the community. It was really, really yeah. community focused, and I really liked that. I was like, okay, cool. These, like, whereas Bitcoin has been kind of like, you know, um, a very kind of uh, exclusive club, Feathercoin was like welcoming, and they were talking about like they had a video. It was really good. It was like talking about some people using Feathercoin at their local bar over in England somewhere. I was like, this is cool. Like, this is like actual real use of this stuff. It's not just some like digital um, thing that nobody uses. So. That got me back into it, um, but then I quickly found out about like Coin Market Cap um, and you know the ever expanding list. And you know there was only like fifty coins back then. Now there's over the two thousand. But um, <laughs> I found out about that, and I was like, um, oh wow, like people are the, people are really using this as an opportunistic way of making money. Um, it's it's not all you know. Uh, it's all not kittens and rainbows and 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 all you know friendly. Okay, so uh, l let me ask you this, right? So when when you originally started Dogecoin, I remember buying my first Dogecoin back in 2014 when it first the first big run up. Yeah, and I heard about it before the big run up, and my uh, trading partner and I, uh, uh, LeonFood.com, he was like, "Dude, this meme coin is going to the moon." I said, "What are you talking about?" And he said, "Dogecoin." I said, "Dogs can't fly." And he goes, "But yeah, but this one is, <laughs> right?" <laughs> and so. I got into Dogecoin back then. Uh, I think I bought like three million uh, uh, Doge back then. <laughs> right? well, that's all right. That's that's worth a bit now. Uh, well, I did, but I lost it all at uh, Cripsy because I had it at Cripsy, Ooh, and you know they it. pulled. You know uh, Paul Vernon, the owner of Cripsy, pulled an exit scam whereby. He got everybody's money, and then he took off with everybody's crypto. Did he actually pull a scam? So this is one of those things. I was on a panel back in 2014 with Paul, and I met him, and he seemed like a nice enough guy. I was on a panel with him and Charlie Lee, and 
I was like, I, when, when I heard about him like running off for the money, I'm like, that, did, did he really do that? Was there ever yeah. like proof it? Oh, wow, that sucks. That yeah, sucks. so, so, so just, just a little uh, crypto history here since you know, we, we have time to talk about it, right? Um, so what happened was somebody had put, you know, Cripsy, in case you guys don't know, was the major altcoin exchange back in 2014. Before Poloniex, before Bittrex, anybody, they were the biggest altcoin exchange uh, in the world, and everybody traded their altcoins there. And so a guy that the guy that owned it, his name is Paul Vernon, and it was down in Florida, in the state of Florida, which is in the southeastern part of the United States of America. And what happened was there was an altcoin on there that the original founder abandoned. So another team came in, another uh, couple of guys came in took over that uh, software, that crypto project. They updated the software. They contacted Paul Vernon and said, hey, you know, we just updated the software. We're the new uh, uh, developers uh, for this project. And they gave him the new code. And he goes, hey, here's the updated version. And what happened was they inserted a Trojan. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a software engineer, OK? So correct me if I'm wrong, OK? <laughs> but they inserted basically a Trojan horse into the software, and exactly. then when they put it up on, uh, on Paul Vernon's uh, 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 Cripsy exchange. Unbeknownst to, to the owner of Cripsy, all that was going on in the background. Yep. Okay? All that was going on in the back, And it started hacking other uh, coins in there. I don't know how they did it, but it, it, it stole a, the Trojans stole a bunch of uh, uh, coins from the exchange to the point where it caused him to lose a ton of money. And he realized that he could not. And when he, he discovered it, instead of announcing it and stuff, he just kept it a secret, just like the guy did at Mount Gox. Gotcha. And so he lost more and more, and then people started having a hard time withdrawing it. And then he finally yeah. said, and he disabled a bunch of wallets and said that he was updating the software. And that update took days, and it became weeks, and it became months. And then rumored came out that he pulled an exit scam and just took everybody's money and hauled ass to China. And Holy so, wow! Yeah, I haven't heard from him in years. But well, neither um, have we. Neither yeah. have we. Yeah, you know, I had his business card and I called him up several times. He, the guy never answered. So wow. You know. Yeah, well, it's one of those things where you know, back in the day, Cripsy was the only place you could trade alts, really, um, like most of them. But because they were actual cryptocurrencies rather like rather than tokens you had to install like the new wallet software for every one right um, with yeah. ethereum it's like what you know you hardly have to change anything to add like bitrex it's like a two second yeah. thing. but um wow i didn't know about the trojan thing interesting yeah so you know that's gone so now we have poloniex and bitrex and you know we you know our channel is a cryptocurrency investing channel it's it's the first and the oldest cryptocurrency investing channel that we know yeah. of you know um, we've been broadcasting about this stuff for the last four or five years. You know, people have been calling us, you know, pumping coins and all that other stuff. But you know, back in 2014, now they call us legends. <laughs> 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 Can you believe that? You know, it turned around. It turned around, man. 2014 yeah, it, was a rough year. So. <laughs> oh, it was, man. You know, you know that, that's you know back back then. You know, they thought you were a jokester when you came up with Dogecoin, and now they think you're a guru. You know, you're you're one of the original guys. Something you know? like that. Some yeah. people dislike me. I think the Dogecoin community pretty much hate me. But um. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't hate you. Let the let the record reflect. Okay, let this is a public record here. Reflect. Okay, that our team does not hate you or Dogecoin. Uh. <laughs> we love you, and we love Dogecoin. Okay. All right, it, from a crypto perspective, because I don't want my wife to think it's like a romantic thing or something like that, and jump on my ass, you know, <laughs> delete my channel and shit. <laughs> okay, so check this out, Jackson. In your mind, what were you thinking of when you came up with Dogecoin? So walk, walk us through the mental process while you were sitting there in your condo, your room, your apartment, your house, wherever you were at. Where were you at when you came up with this idea about Dogecoin, and what was going through your head? So I was back in Australia. Um, I just it was like December of 2013, and I just it was late November, and I just decided to move to America. Actually, um, so I was like planning that, um, and so this was I didn't move. A lot of people think I moved to America because of Dogecoin. Really, it's not the case. Um, oh man, that is so disappointing, man. We no. <laughs> our team always thought you came to the U.S. because of Dogecoin. Not the case. See, a lot of people don't know the true history. So I. Um, 
so I was I was already planning, and then and then I'd gotten into like Feathercoin, as I said, and then I was on Coin Market Cap, and I just like refreshed it all the time, and I realized like these new coins were getting added. I'm like, what is this? And like some of them were like just straight up pump and dump. Some of them were like, oh my god, like some you know guy in a basement is like doing this thing. It's you know very shady. Doesn't have his real name on it. Um, and so I was like, man, people are like really like using this as an opportunistic thing. And there were there were all sorts of stupid names for coins back then. Like um, there was one called Hobo Nickels. Like I, it was it was like one of the OG like stupid coins. Um, and uh, so I was just sitting down with a beer, and I'm like, um, it was around the time that, that, that the Doge meme came in. And because I was like super into GIFs and memes and stuff, I was like super into the Doge meme at the time. Um, and so I just like went on Twitter like after a beer, and I'm just like, I'm going to invest in Dogecoin. That's the next big thing. And I didn't even think about it. Like I didn't even, I was just like, this is, a, like, I was kind of taking a jab at all these scam coins <laughs> that were like popping up on coin market cap. So I just post that, you know, had a couple more beers and went to bed. And uh, I woke up the next day and I've got like all these retweets, all these people contacting me being like, this is amazing. Like Dogecoin is the future. And I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? Um, so that's kind of how it got created. You were ahead of your time, Jackson. You were. <laughs> You saw dry land through muddy wa waters, man. You know. <laughs> so yeah, what happened was I after that, um, my co-founder uh, reached out to me. He was in the U.S. Um, and he was like, you know, man, we can change the font to Comic Sans really easy in the in the Doge in the in the Bitcoin wallet. I'm like, okay, now you've got my attention. So you know, we. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all we you did was change like the font. Is that we, all you did was change the font and made Dogecoin? So, kind of. So I made the image and we worked out like the number of like, um, like basically to clone it, all you had to do was like clone something like Litecoin, which is what we did, and then replace all the images, replace, do basically a find and replace with like Bitcoin or Litecoin to Dogecoin, um, change the font, and then... Um, what we had to come up with the only like kind of I, I would say thing that required any intelligence was the coin distribution, right? So like the coin cap, and then um, we're like, oh, what do we want the block rewards to be? And I'm like, let's make the block rewards random just to screw with people. So we made the block rewards random. Um, it was really like hilarious because like miners I think could get anywhere between one and one million Dogecoin for mining a block early on, and so it was like sometimes these pools would hit blocks and they'd be like, damn it, we only got one Doge for this stupid block. But, um, <laughs> Wait, so the mining reward was just a random number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was like it was like a random number, but it was decreasing between the different ranges. Anyway, and then it was like it was literally like one day or less of coding work. Um, biggest problem was trying to get it to build on on different platforms. Like we only had like a Windows client for so long because um, it was like Bitcoin's code base is still pretty messy and and hard to build. Anyway, so um, we did hey, all don't, that. And don't, don't, don't tell the Bitcoin core guys that. <laughs> you might get lynched, man, oh, by I a Bitcoin them, maximalist. I tell them all the time. That's fine. That's fine. We always butt heads. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, the then we pushed it out into the world, and we were just like, you know what? People are going to forget about this thing after like seven days. Like we'll mine a little bit of it on our on our GPUs just for you know you know kicks, but you know it'll be like a flash in the pan. Nobody will care about. It. And by about the third day, like we're messaging each other and we're like, wait a minute, why are we not getting any block rewards anymore? And we look at the like global hash rate, and the hash rate has gone like crazy up because all the like Litecoin miners pointed all their hash at the at Dogecoin, and we're like, oh my god, like this is actually becoming a thing. Um, and then it just kind of like snowballed from there. Like, you know, a few days later, I got like contacted by Business Insider and just like, it just, it just kept growing. You got a visitor there. Oh, hey, what's up, Thena? Oh, it's my <laughs> daughter. Hey, say hello to the founder of Dogecoin. Say hello. Say, Daddy. Yeah, no, say, 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 Doge to the moon. Say, Doge to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> say, Doge to the moon. <laughs> Daddy. What? Would you say Doge to the moon? <laughs> you don't teach her about Doge, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, Daddy, Daddy's got to finish this Dogecoin interview. Hey, 
Can you go get your dog? Can you go get your dog and show Jackson how Doge is going to the moon? Hey, don't watch out for that fan, sweetheart. Watch out for that fan. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> you want to jump in here on the interview? All right. Okay, okay. So, so what? Um, so what is the like? Before I came onto this interview, like I looked on the Doge coin, right? And uh, I saw that it has not been the software has not been updated since like two, three years now. 2015. Yeah, yeah, that was the last the last build. I was maintaining it for like the first year, and then um, I kind of handed over development to their a core dev team. There was like three guys, and um, but they have they have day jobs. <laughs> so like, so do, you, do, you, do you still have access to the repo or the GitHub? Do nah. you still have access to update the software? No, so I've got I've got no access. The only so, thing I have access to is the domain Dogecoin.com. That's okay. it. Okay. So who who has access to be able to update the software? Well, so anybody can fork it, right? So that's the beauty of, of crypto is anybody can fork it and do whatever they want with it. But the actual repo itself, there's three guys that do it, and the lead guy is called um, Max, um, otherwise known as Langer Hands on on Twitter. Um, but yeah, he has a full time job. He's from like Germany. Um, just he doesn't. They don't have time to um, work on it, you know, full time. And the other thing is like. From a maintenance perspective, the Dogecoin network is like objectively not having any issues right now. There's no scaling issues. Transaction fees are basically nil. Um, things are fast because we have 60 second blocks. So um, there's no real problems, um, and there's no security issues that I'm aware of. But yeah. yeah, so this is gonna tickle you to death, Jackson. This is gonna tickle you, okay? Okay. So we run these uh, cryptocurrency investing boot camps to. Mm -hmm. You know, teach uh, you know professional traders and, and 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 hedge funds and stuff like that how to invest in cryptocurrencies, right? And so <laughs> we we have to demo like how to set up orders, how to you know you know submit orders to the exchange and how mm -hmm. to move coins around and everything. So while we are teaching at the cryptocurrency investing boot camp, right? We have to use Dogecoin. <laughs> To illustrate what Bitcoin is supposed to do, because <laughs> <laughs> it's so fast, right? Yeah, because like we're in the middle of lecturing and we're you know teaching the 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 the, the audience, the boot camp attendees on how to set up transactions. Man, we ain't got time to sit for two hours to wait for the transaction to confirm. You know, so to test to make sure that the the the, the boot camp attendees know how to send and transact and in, 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 mm -hmm. in, in how to secure it in their wallet, how to move it from, you know, we do tests to make sure they know how to move it from the exchange to their Exodus wallet, uh, Got it. on their desktop, you know, to, uh, to the uh, Ledger Nano and back and forth. And we want to make sure that when they leave the boot camp, they know how to store and secure their cryptos. The right. problem when we do it with Bitcoin is that there's two reasons why it confuses the hell out of people when we do it with Bitcoin in the in the four days that we have to do the boot camp training, right? One is that it takes forever to confirm the transaction, so everyone's sitting around waiting. Well, did did, did it go through? Right? Yeah. Which is a real pain in the ass when you're trying to teach somebody how to you know make transactions with right. the cryptocurrency. The second thing is that it confuses a beginning trader or investor because there's eight decimal places. So when you tell someone, hey, send 100,000 Satoshis over here to this address, or everybody send it over here, it's like, okay, what's 100,000 Satoshis, or what's that, right? It just confuses mm. people. So you know, eventually, we got to the point where, hey, you know what? It's so much easier. We just, okay, everybody send me their address, and boom, we just send out a, a, a mass transaction, and we send out you know, 500 Doge coins to everybody. That's great. That's no, everybody send us, you know, five Doge coins here in each test transaction and prove to us that you know what you're doing. Right? So we do that and then you know, like, you know <laughs> I know so it, you're, it, it, so it, you're it, the ones that are using Dogecoin. I've been wondering for the longest time who's actually using it. It's you guys. <laughs> yeah, like we, we even like every time we do one of these boot camps, we contact Exodus and we tell them, Hey, we're about to run a ton of, of Dogecoin transactions through, you know. So just be aware that we're not spamming your wallet and we're not spamming your network. You know, we're running a ton of transactions through to, to show, to illustrate to our students. Doge you know? can handle it. Doge can handle yeah. it because it's the block times and the low transaction fees. And it, it's funny, like, a lot of people, like, go on about, like, Bitcoin scaling issues, right? And, 
you know, while I understand SegWit and everything, I, I often think like we were scalable like, you know, three years ago. Like what, what's going on? Like even Litecoin is, is faster, right? Like than Bitcoin. It, it's yeah, just that's, that's, that's actually the second uh, uh, token that we use in our uh, uh, boot camp demos and, and, and demonstrations to, to show people how to properly secure their, their, their cryptocurrencies. Is mm -hmm. we use the, the first one is Dogecoin and the second one we use is uh, is Litecoin because they're just faster and we can, we can talk about it, show it real quick, and then people can just see it instantly. Which yeah. you know it's funny because when I remember at the time that you were speaking at, uh, I think it was uh, I can't remember what the name of the event was, but you were sitting like in a white couch. I remember you were sitting on a white couch on stage. Um, Coin Summit, maybe. I think if that's what it was. And you were talking about how there was going to be, you know, you see a world of a bunch of cryptocurrencies. And actually, that was actually what led me to be, to switch from becoming, around that time when I saw your uh, uh, talk, it actually helped to contribute to my mindset about letting go of being just a Bitcoin maximalist. Oh, yeah. And becoming more of a cryptocurrency maximalist and not just a Bitcoin maximalist because the reality is, you know, that, that talk you had made me realize, and our team helped me realize that, you know what? If a joke coin that was done on purpose as a joke by the founder, and he told everybody that it was a joke, and it's still a $300 million crypto, then the market is seeing something. The market values a wide variety of cryptocurrencies and not just one. Totally That's, true. Yeah. You know, so and look, I, and look at where we are now, right? Like back then, there was like a couple hundred. Now there's thousands. Um, dude, you you are like you saw dry land through muddy waters, bro. You you <laughs> you saw dry land through muddy waters, man. You know. So it's uh, interesting. I, I think it's one of the problems with Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin doesn't innovate, um, and so like I think that's why diversity is is always a good thing because. People can come out, and even if it's a you know a crazy joke coin, they can innovate in little ways. Um, be it on the community side, be it on the technical side, whatever. So yeah. Okay. You ready? <laughs> so okay. So let me ask you this, man. Like nowadays, what are you doing now? Are you involved in the crypto space at all or anything? Yeah, or absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So um, these days, I have like a YouTube channel, so I, I decided to, to follow the trend and become a YouTuber. <laughs> um, so I have that uh, YouTube.com. So, yeah. So so you can you go ahead and and uh, and, uh, uh, and and mention the name of your channel. And yeah, yeah. It's just my name. It's it's, it's uh, YouTube.com forward slash Jackson Palmer, all one word. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm doing a series over there called Crypto Explained, where I basically started off with like, what is a blockchain? and have now gone through to like talk about things like smart contracts, cross-chain protocols, where to store your cryptocurrency, like what is a hardware wallet. Um, I've, re I've reviewed like three different types of hardware wallets. So yeah, um, I'm doing that. And I'm also doing a, a part kind of called Staying Secure Online, which is just about online security because so many people are getting hacked um, that are in crypto. And so it's really important that people understand how to do like 2FA, like use a password manager, all these basics. So, because what happened was, like, I went. I was on like kind of a, a, a took a break. I took a vacation from crypto, if you will, after 2015. Because I'm not going to go through the history, but back in like late 2014, there was like a scammer in the Dogecoin space, and there was a big kerfuffle. And so I kind of like backed away. Um, but what I started seeing in the beginning of this year really reminded me of what was happening back in early 2014 with a kind of run up, a lot more interest from outside. It wasn't just this niche anymore. And I was like, you know what's going to happen? People are going to start losing money. People are going to start getting scammed. People are like not going to secure their, you know, their passwords and stuff like that. So I was like, I need to do a video series that explains all the stuff that I learned like three years ago when I was going through the same thing. So that's what I'm focusing on. Are you cool if we post some of those videos that you make on our website? At Go for it. Go for it. That market? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help because, see, what's happening is, like, crypto is becoming, like, the water cooler talk, right? Like, people are talking about it at work and at social events. And then they go and start reading about it, and they don't know any better than to store all their money on Coinbase or an exchange, right? They don't know these things. 
And so um, I'm just trying to help people not lose money. Yeah, okay. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Now, are you working on any blockchain project or any crypto project, any ICO project? Not really. So I have a full-time job. I do product management here in, in the Bay. Um, but um, I, I'm kind of like, you know, informally advising a few kind of um, companies that are obviously doing ICOs, but trying to do innovative space, uh, in, innovative stuff in the, in the space, like mostly in the Ethereum smart contract side of things. Um, but you know, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of becoming a press person in um, in the in the crypto space. Like next week, I'm going to be at the Ethereal conference here in SF and be interviewing all these like entrepreneurs and stuff like that. So that's kind of my focus. I like I like that aspect because it's 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 about um, kind of evangelizing good stuff in the space and helping kind of weed out anything that you know consumers or new investors should avoid. Okay, okay. And, and so what, what has prevented you from working on, I mean, there's like 1,100 coins, that's over 1,100 coins that's listed on CoinMarketCap. What, what has prevented you from joining one of those projects? I mean, I'm sure the majority of them are bogus, but like, yeah, there are yeah. some legit ones in there. What's, what has prevented you from, I mean, you're the Dogecoin, the founder of Dogecoin. I mean, like anybody would love to have you on their team, you know, so... What, what, what is preventing you from joining any of these teams? Is it because you have no interest, no time, or don't care, or? or, or yeah, like there's a couple of, like, I think the, there's two reasons. I think, firstly, I think the space and the industry still has to do a lot of evolving before I like go completely head in, right? Like dive in head first. Um, I think the community has been evolving while by bringing in a more diverse range of like outside demographics. And I, I like that. Um, but like for the last few years, cryptocurrency has been a very exclusive club and I didn't like that. And so I didn't want to just go into this niche thing. Secondly, um, though, I feel like if I'm going to go and do something full time, it needs to be a really awesome idea. Like it needs to be, you know, I, I need a top Dogecoin. <laughs> um, you know, and but um, dude, but also just check this out, man. We have a this is an internal team discussion we had, you know, because we sit around and brainstorm different projects that we invest in and trade on, mm. and we we it was a unanimous conclusion on everyone on our trading team that five years from now, ten years from now. 90% of these cryptocurrencies will never even be remembered, but Dogecoin will still be on the first page of CoinMarketCap, <laughs> right? It's probably so true. Dogecoin will still be there. And, yeah. and we all agree. And there was no one on our team that disputed that. <laughs> and we just sat there laughing that we all came to the same conclusion because what people don't understand is this, is that the success of a cryptocurrency is based on the community behind it. Absolutely. And I, Dogecoin yeah. has a huge community. And most huge people don't realize that. And like, not even like, even though it's community, like active community is smaller these days, what I find amazing is I'll go to any Bitcoin meetup. You know, I host a Bitcoin meetup here every S, every Friday in SF. I'm actually going to it after this. Um, but people will come up and they'll say, they, they won't know that I'm the Dogecoin guy, right? And they'll meet me and I'll say, oh, yeah, I did Dogecoin. And they're like, wow, I got into crypto because of Dogecoin. Yeah. I think, I think, and that's what I think is, is interesting, right? Like Dogecoin exposed decentralized technology um, to such a broader group of people. We had women, we had kids coming to our, our, our um, Dogecoin meetups because it wasn't this daunting, like if you look at the, like just go on Twitter and like search no 2 X or like SegWit and just look at the, like the bunch of like, you know, bearded reddit people that are just yelling at one another it's a very it's, unwelcoming it's, drama. it's it's the like the the, the 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 to me the bitcoin maximalist and, and that yeah. through that environment it's so negative and so cancerous and that's why it has such a hard time gaining mainstream adoption exactly it's, it's unwelcoming that, 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 it's that cancer uh, and they and they don't see it they, that, that's the sad thing about it is that they don't see it but all the other communities see that you know, I, yeah, and one of the things about Dogecoin is that it has never been cancerous that I know of. It's always been a positive community, and, and that's why we we always say that that it's going to be on the front page of Coin Market Cap. You know. Yeah, or or like I think the thing is, um, I I think 
the community is so important. Like I actually see Ethereum sadly going towards the same place that Bitcoin has, got, has gone because Ethereum has scaling issues. We're all aware of that. And, um, you know, already we're having kind of these arguments and I'm like, guys, like let's build some great technology um, and, and not get caught up in these political, so many land grabs, you know? Um, yeah. So the, here, here's the thing, man. Like, here's the thing, Jackson. What are the odds, right? Is there any chance that the original founder of Dogecoin will come back, the prodigal son? <laughs> to, Do to Dogecoin? To come back to Dogecoin. Maybe. I've been thinking, so. Like, if, if we, but how, how about this, right? Let me ask you this, right? If we, if our channel was to, able to help raise money and fund you to come back, would you do that? It's not about money. So it's, it's not about money. No, no, it's, I mean, like, we, we don't want you to update the software for free and spend your time. I mean, come on, man. Like, nobody, already, like Here's the crazy thing. There's already a dev fund. There's a dev fund with, like, I think over $100,000 in it for Dogecoin. Nobody's, it's not being used right now because nobody's actively developing it. So it's not, it's not a money. Okay, so, 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 so you mean to tell me that if I assemble a team, like a, like a professional team of software engineers to step in and update the Dogecoin, Right, you you will help us make sure the, the the thing that we want is just to update it to like just the standard features, you know. Segwit, yeah, it should have segwit, it work. should have segwit enabled. It should, I I agree. Um, it's just it's it's a lot of work, and so you need to have experienced blockchain developers. Like we've talked about this. Like we've said, you know, the guys that are managing it right now, they don't have the time. Okay. Um, so like how like what would a good team look like? But it's it you got to find somebody you trust, right? Like that's that's the we're in a trustless system, and in, like finding people you can trust is so hard. Okay, um, so yeah. I I have somebody in mind. Okay. I have some, yeah, like I have somebody in mind that we we outsource because we are building some software tools, and like they are a professional software development agency. Like they're not a bunch of clowns. They build software for Fortune Five. Do they know blockchain? Yeah, they oh, they great. yeah they 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 are familiar with it. And matter of fact. I'm gonna actually get you guys together and collaborate on this because one of the things that we don't like is this. Like we do talk a lot about Dogecoin, and one of the things that always concerns us is this: is that it hasn't the software hasn't been updated in mm -hmm. a few years, and you know there's a lot of security bugs that they have found in Bitcoin since then. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know about code, but I do know that you know if it forked off of Litecoin and they've they've had update bugs and stuff like that since then. I would like to see our team would like to see that being developed and update as well. Like nothing, nothing fancy, just just update the software. That's it. That makes sense. If you can like get, find people to do it, like I yeah. think myself and the devs currently on it would be more than happy. Be like, guys, take it and and do what you want. Like the, okay. um, you know, that's the beauty of distributed like you know, open source software. Um, I think, funny enough, I actually the other day I direct messaged Charlie Lee. On Twitter, on Twitter, and I'm like, "Hey, do you want to be the the core dev of, of Dogecoin?" But he said he's too busy, too busy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now, now speaking of Charlie Lee, right? There was a time in the bear market after 2014, after the Mountain Gox crash, and you know the bear market. I mean, just yep. everything just tanked, right? And you know, there's a lot of skeptics and doubters that thought that this is over. You know, Bitcoin's never going to make it, never recover from this. If you mm. tell somebody that someday, you know, they're they're Four hundred four hundred dollar bitcoins will become four thousand dollars. They would slap you and think you're nuts. You know, during that time, I remember that you, you probably shocked that I know all this stuff about Dogecoin, man. But I've been keeping track, keeping an eye on it. Okay, but there was a time when Charlie Lee, the founder of Litecoin, wanted to merge mine and unite the hashing power of Litecoin and Dogecoin. Do you remember That's that? How it works. That, that, that's actually what happened. It, it actually happened. We worked with him and Dogecoin, here's the problem, right? So Dogecoin, because it was a script coin, um, same hashing algorithm, um, was susceptible to attacks. So a, a bunch of Litecoin miners, if they wanted to completely decimate the network, could point their hashing power at Dogecoin for a few minutes and just kill it, right? So what we did is we implemented something called merge mining, which is the same thing that Namecoin does with Bitcoin. Um, and what it basically means is that all these script coins that use the same hashing algorithm, the miners get rewarded in all the coins, right? So when you're a Litecoin miner now, you also get some Dogecoin on the side. So we implemented this, and this is how Dogecoin is actually secured. 
Um, it's actually quite controversial because um, some people were against that. I, I was for it because I'm for better security and less wastefulness. But uh, I, I, I was completely for it too. I thought it was a great idea uh, back then. You know? Yeah, no, it's a great idea. And um, I think merge mining is actually, interestingly enough, um, if you look at new protocols like Polkadot, um, the whole way their security model works in that new protocol is through something that's very similar to merge mining. So I think merge mining is actually going to see a resurgence as a way to fix scaling in security. Okay. So is there merge? Is the merge mining currently running right now with yep. Dogecoin? Has been, it has been for a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's awesome then. Okay. So what, uh, what's, uh, um, what, what are your perspectives since you're one of the early uh, adopters of blockchains and, I mean, founder of Doge, you know, you, you create a cryptocurrency that I consider very successful and our team considers very, very successful, right? It's successful, except it didn't make me any money, but... <laughs> hey, you know what? You said you weren't in it for the money. That is true. I, yeah, okay, I so you, to, you said you weren't in it for the money, so you can't <laughs> complain about that now, okay? Now, our channel... We got into Dogecoin because of money, because we're professional traders. So when we saw an opportunity, we jumped on it. Okay? I, sh I should have gave you all my Doge and said, just go with it. <laughs> like, <laughs> manage it for me. <laughs> Instead, I gave it all the charities, but ah, whatever. Okay. Well, maybe it's time to load up on some because it's around, uh, it's below like 20 uh, Satoshis right now. You might want to load up some because if we, you know, get this, uh, you know, a uh, uh, professional software agency, you know, to, to come and update the software for the entire community, you mm -hmm. know, that might spark some life back into it. You know? That's a good so. point. I, I think, like, here's the thing. I think um, Dogecoin, what I've realized as, we, as we've had this whole scaling debate in Bitcoin is that Dogecoin and Litecoin and those kind of faster things show that scaling is totally possible, right? Um, and so I, I actually would, it's a, it becomes a branding thing, right? Um, I think how would Dogecoin, like, contend with, like, Ethereum and some of these other like top tier coins right now and just in terms of branding maybe it would win I don't know um, you, you know what I think you know what I think it is the community you can't beat the community of people right mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the community this is one thing that we learned from uh, Charles Hoskinson one of the uh, original founders of Ethereum and the current main team that's developing the uh, Ethereum classic uh, network right uh, you know, one of the things that we learned from him over the years, right, is that the community, all of the value of a cryptocurrency is based on its community. And people think it's tech. People think it's technology, but it's not. I made that mistake too. I made the mistake that, that I thought it was the tech, you know, so when you hear these guys that don't understand the mm. big picture like Charles Hoskinson does, all they talk about is the tech. Right, and I can prove to you that it's not the tech. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if it was the tech, you know, Litecoin had segregated witness long before Bitcoin, but it doesn't have the same community as Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So if it was the technology that gives it the value, then why isn't Litecoin worth two, three, four, five thousand dollars? Because it's not the tech; it's the community behind it. Yeah, it's an that's a, it's an interesting thing. I think. It's My a, challenge, yeah. It's the same thing. Like, let's say we take gold or silver or anything that we have value. Out in nature, a, a chunk of gold sitting on the ground, like you're in San Francisco where the biggest gold rush happened in American history where people were running out there during the 1800s and there yeah. were just chunks of gold laying, laying on the ground. Literally, there was just chunks of gold just laying around in San Francisco. That's what grew San Francisco and the Bay Area was because of that, right? Yeah. And it didn't have value. It was laying there for hundreds and millions of years. And it wasn't until humans came along and started hanging around that area that gave those chunks of gold value. And it's the same thing with cryptocurrencies. And that was like the biggest lesson that our team learned from Charles yeah. Hoskinson. I think, I think what I want to, like, if I was to start ever working on something in crypto again, I think my, my core goal would be building a community that uses the currency rather than hoards it. I think that is my thing because I think we're, we're at a point right now where most of these cryptocurrencies aren't actually being used as currencies. They're being used as, they're being used like gold. They're being used as an investment vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I think like, I, 
honestly, if we're going to go around and talk about how we're going to replace banks and we're going to replace, you know, digital commerce, we have to start like walking the walk, you know, um, and um, nobody's using cryptocurrency that way. Like, heck, you can't use Bitcoin for it because you'll be sitting waiting for your coffee for two hours, like, <laughs> or, or several days. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, and check this out, like a bunch of people jumped on my ass and they said I was, you know, creating FUD. You know, because I said I posted that I sent like a two thousand dollars worth of bitcoins, and mm -hmm. I put you know a ten cent fee on it. I was just testing it, like you know, I was like, okay, this segwit thing is supposed to speed things up and everything, and I put a ten cent fee on it, right? Now a lot of people say I was being cheap on the transaction fee, right? But I wanted to see if it was able to do what Bitcoin did when I first got into Bitcoin back in 2012, 2013, right? Mm -hmm. Back then I was sending transactions for free, and it right. was like almost instant. Just like that, okay? I, I think it's, yeah, I, I think the, the whole, there, there's two camps, right? There's the camp that's like, well, you should be paying transaction fees, and then there's the other camp that says, well, you know, like, I, I, think, I think we need to have to find, like, a, uh, a kind of good medium, right? Um, where, like, I'm happy to pay transaction fees, but you know what? Like, those transaction fees shouldn't um, be more expensive than, say, credit cards or PayPal or stuff like that, because why would anybody ever use it if you're going to have those transaction fees? Like, if I'm going to go and buy a cup of coffee with my Bitcoin, I shouldn't be paying $3 in transaction fees. You know, I could have gotten two coffees if I paid for, with cash. So Yeah, absolutely. And then that's something that people forget, you know, that, you know, when on, on the Bitcoin white paper, it says Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, you know, and yeah. right now, it's it's sad because all the people that are coming into Bitcoin right now don't see how it's being used as an electronic cash anymore. No. It's just basically an investment vehicle, and it's it a is. store of value versus yeah. being it's a retail adoption is so low. Like I remember back in 2013, 2014, you could go to most restaurants and coffee shops in San Francisco, and they'd have little "We accept Bitcoin, Litecoin, Do even Dogecoin." I went and paid for a meal here in Dogecoin. And over the last few years, they've all disappeared. And I asked these merchants, I'm like, why aren't you, why aren't you accepting it anymore? Like, what happened? And they're like, we got customers just stopped using it because the price went up. And I'm like, okay, there you go. Like, that's that's a huge problem because like, why is anybody like? So if I ever get back into crypto building something, I think what I would do is get back into fulfilling that goal because that's the original white paper of Bitcoin. That's what it said is we want to build digital cash. So let's actually achieve that before we like, I love smart contracts and stuff, but honestly, I'd rather fix the, the base problem before we go off into like fantasy land with all that stuff. It's, uh, it, it's funny because, you know, if I had to dedicate time and, 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 and join a cryptocurrency project, right? Mm -hmm. I would join a project that was trying to build a electronic, peer-to-peer -peer cash system yep. as a currency. That's, that's, I, I don't care about any of these other projects. You know, I just want one that, the, that, that, can, that has a chance of gaining mainstream adoption, right? Because gaining mainstream adoption, right, will elevate the value of all these other cryptocurrencies. Yeah. You know, so, all right. Well, uh, we're coming to the end of the hour here, man. Um, yeah. And Absolutely. I appreciate you coming on. You know, uh, thanks for having me on. And I, I, I yeah, I, uh, I like the show. I, uh, yeah, I definitely like to have you back, man. You know, you're welcome to come back at any time, man. You know, we'd be happy to have the the, the, the founder of Dogecoin here, right? So you uh, have shared a lot of information with us on how it got started. You have cleared up the fact that you don't have any beef with uh, <laughs> Mr. Bitcoin Lambo, uh, the Doge Lord, the uh, uh, you know your biggest. You know, Dogecoin fan, right? Number one Bitcoin <laughs> fan, right? I'm gonna set it up to where you unite with him one day, and maybe I, I'm all for it. Hey, hey, we can all go to Atlanta. This is what we should do. We should all go to Atlanta and slap on a Dogecoin mask and ride around in the Lambo. <laughs> ride around I the Bitcoin really Lambo. Down with that. Count me in. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Peter? You hear that, Mr. Bitcoin Lambo? <laughs> Let the record reflect that the Dogecoin founder is willing to put on a Dogecoin mask and roll around in the Bitcoin Lambo. <laughs> I'm down for some Doge shenanigans. Count me in. <laughs> you know, and I'll tell you what. When we get our Ferrari and our Lambo in Texas, we will fly you in 
with the Dogecoin mask, and we will roll around in the Lambo, the McLaren, or the Ferrari in the Lambo, in the Dogecoin mask with the Dogecoin founder. <laughs> Count me in. Count me in. Seriously. It's done. <laughs> it's done. When you see us with the Lambo on our channel, you just tweet out to us, you know, that, hey, Dogecoin, Doge Lord is in. Hold him up. Doge Lord is here. Doge Lord is here. Hold him up. Hold him up. I'm going to send him a link and bring him on right now, bro. Okay. I'm going to bring him on right now, right? Dogecoin Lord, don't go nowhere. I'm sending you the link to join okay. us right now. All right. I, I, on. I, I've only gotten, I can only be here another five, 10 minutes. I got to go to this meetup that I run. All right. I'm sending it to you on your Twitter right here, Dogecoin Lord, right? Hold on here. Where is the Dogecoin Lord at, right? <laughs> I can't believe I got this, both of you guys on here. This is awesome. It's but happening live. Live it's television. It's happening live, folks. right? See, this is not something that, uh, let me see here. Dogecoin Lord, right? Let me see. How can I get this to him here, right? Can you just tweet it or can you direct message? Let me see here. Dogecoin Lord. Let me send this to him. I'm going to email it to you, Dogecoin Lord, right now, right? There you go, right here. I got him. Check your email, Dogecoin Lord, and join us right now. <laughs> I'm gonna take hilarious. him up on the. I'm gonna take him up on the Lambo ride. I know yeah. been in the Lambo. So we are I, going to make this arrangement. <laughs> okay, give us a few minutes. Do Dogecoin's number one fan is about to join us with the Dogecoin founder. The Doge Lord will be here with us shortly, guys. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. No, I, I didn't expect it either, but he just he popped in, man. So <laughs> he popped How in the chat. How many people are in the chat? Uh, let me see. There's, uh, there's 50 right now, but, man, these, these are – see, our, our, our people are watching this. They're, they're, they're diehard fans, man. So, you know, it's, it's not how many people. It's the quality of the people, man. For sure. I, so, I agree. Dogecoin, Doge Lord meets Doge Founder. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Bring it on, huh? How many, how many Dogecoin does he have? Oh, I, I think he has the biggest stockpile of Dogecoin, I think. If, if, he's not just the number one fan. I, I, I honestly believe that, that this guy has, uh, I, I think the last time uh, we, we talked offline, I think he's got like, you know, six figures worth of hardware mining Dogecoin. Holy whoa! Okay. <laughs> I think if I remember, I met, I met some Doge whales before, but this is this is no 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 no. no, 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 no. no those Doge whales are fake. Okay, I mean this guy can get a, a Doge coin Lambo. Okay, so don't don't let those other guys, you know, uh, 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 oh my, take you out, man. Where you at, Doge Lord? <laughs> Where you are? Where is the Doge Lord? You know, so. <laughs> He's in Atlanta, actually, you know, and um, he's been doing some heavy, heavy research on, uh, on, uh, on um, uh, which one is the Doge Lord? Doge Lord is Peter Sabington. He is the host of Bite Size Bitcoin uh, YouTube channel, and he is from Atlanta, Georgia. He's also known as uh, Mr. Bitcoin Lambo because he was the first one to uh, – buy a, uh, a Bitcoin Lamborghini uh, Huracan, uh, I mean a Lamborghini Huracan with a, a, a Bitcoin, you know, so. Those things don't come cheap. No, they're not cheap. They're not cheap. <laughs> so it, it takes a, uh, uh, somebody serious to be able to get it, you know, so. <laughs> he, here we go. All right. All right. We got him on. We got the Doge Lord on. We got the Doge Lord on. Breaking news, folks. <laughs> we got the Doge Lord on. Where are you at, man? Turn the lights on, man. Turn Don't be bashful, man. <laughs> so are you there, man? We can't hear you. Unmute. Turn the lights on in your Lambo, bro. <laughs> we cannot hear you. Doge Lord is here, right? I gotta tweet this out, man, while we're waiting for him to come on, man. This is like the most hilarious show I think that I've done. Here we can see year. you now on mute. Right. Oh. Oh, hey. Doge Lord, Doge Lord. Me, I Doge told you, Lord. man, I, I told you Google Hangouts doesn't work for me, guys. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't matter what you do. I, I can't use it. I can only use Skype. So it's, I'm not going to get any sound. You guys are going to hear me, but I'm not going to hear anything you guys say. 
So it's not going to work oh, out. No. Um, I'll try to load it up. But Jackson Palmer, my man, you blocked me on Twitter, bro. You blocked <laughs> me on Twitter, man. I'm your biggest fan. I invested in Dogecoin from the very beginning, my man. You me. Oh, my God. I invested uh, in Dogecoin from the very beginning. It's staking it, making them nodes, bro. Dude, I've been mining <laughs> hundreds of millions of Dogecoin, man. <laughs> I'm riding in the I'm riding But I know you guys can't hear me, so let me see if I can get this thing. No, we do hear you, man. We it's do all good, you. man. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Let me see if I can load this up so it actually works. Oh, oh. actually, I'm going to do this on my phone. That's what I'm going to do. We do hear you, bro. Um, peace we out. We do hear you. He's going to join through his phone, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is the most hilarious show up we've had this year, man. This is, this is great. This is uh, Doge, things Doge that happen Lord, in life. Doge Lord meets the founder of Doge. <laughs> He's not going to be able to sleep tonight, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh, there there he is. <laughs> hey, man. Can you hear us now? Yes, because I'm, I'm using it on my phone. Jackson Palmer, my man. <laughs> my man. <laughs> hey, I told you, Peter. I told you I was going to connect you with the founder of Doge, man. Yo, and you're like, I'm biggest fan. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, you're like, I'm like, you're like, that's never gonna happen, man. He blocked me, man. Explain to him. Explain Look, to it's him. happening. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, yeah, hey, I am your biggest fan. I have at least over 250 videos where I'm pumping Dogecoin. I'm gonna have to go back and watch him, man. I. <laughs> I'm so the only. Know. I'm the only one in the world who pumps Dogecoin the most. It's it's a statistical fact. Were you in the Were you in the the video earlier when I was talking about this? Um, no, I just got oh. on. I just got on, and all I saw was your face, and then I saw Tizen, and I was like, "Yo, these are my two. <laughs> these are my two, two. Like two of my favorite people." So what happened was, I, you must have posted the video, and then I started just getting all these like bots. And my whenever I get bots, I just I have like an auto blocker which just blocks them all. Oh, okay. Well, it's probably because I have like a lot of people that love Dogecoin as much as I do. So that must I, be it. <laughs> it must have been tweeted out, and then people must have retweeted. But it was it was no harm, no foul, man. I got I don't even know. I probably have like hundred, literally like a hundred million or so, like Dogecoin. I got Holy I got Dogecoin God. on like five different exchanges. It's all over the place. <laughs> don't leave it I, on exchanges, man. Cryptsy. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't worry too much, but it is an honor. It is an honor to be speaking with you, Jackson Palmer. Uh, man, I'm your biggest fan. I have, you probably saw the Doge mask, right? Did you see I the Doge see, mask? I didn't see the Doge mask. I got to go back inside here, man. That, that, that's, that's what I was hoping for, man. I was hoping for that you would come on. Oh, yeah. I've mask. got the same mask somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I've got that somewhere. <laughs> hey, check this out. Check this I'm out. Find it. Give me two seconds. Hey, while he's looking for that, Peter, check this out, man. Check this out. I told him, you know, that we are going to Atlanta with the Doge mask, the ride of the Bitcoin Lambo, and Yo. he said, he's down. Doge Lord meets Dogecoin founder. Yo, no! <laughs> <laughs> he's got it. It's still in him. <laughs> are we hey. doing it? Are we we did it. it. I, I can't believe this is actually happening on my show, man. Are we doing this, guys? <laughs> hey, we need both you guys in the Bitcoin Lambo driving around Atlanta, man, <laughs> with that, man. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is hilarious. <laughs> this is hilarious. This is it. Hey. I knew this mask would come in handy. <laughs> this is it, guys. This is the future right here. It Buy Dogecoin. I, man, I have... I have so many questions for you, man. I have so many questions for you. Hey, oh, man, it's hot in there. <laughs> hey, check this out. I'm going to have to get you guys connected so he comes on your uh, Bitcoin pub show, man. I would love to. I would love to. He has to, to run to a meeting. He has to go yeah, run. Yeah, I got to go to a meetup that I'm running. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, he, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he has a Dogecoin meetup that he's running, you know. So, hey, that's cool that you jumped on the last, you know, uh, 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 you know, at the spur of the moment like that. Peter, man, thanks for coming on, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this. Is, this is great. <laughs> we, should, we should do this again. And if I'm we ever should. in Georgia or if you're ever in SF, hit me up. San Francisco, I'll be there, man. I will hang out with you, Jackson. Do it. My hey, man. We'll, hey, our team will come up there, man, with you too, man. Just, just to hang out, man, with the Doge mask, man. <laughs>
you, you know, you got to get thank one, you. Matt, Ty. You got to go yeah, on I Amazon, have, get no, a no, Doge mod. I have to get one now, man. But I'm not going to be left out, okay? I'm not going to be left out, right? You know, I got left out back in high school, you know, a lot of stuff. But now, so, you know. So, so make sure to unblock me at Bite Size Bitcoin so I can tweet the picture I just took of all, both of us <laughs> oh wearing God. the Doge mask. So make sure you unblock me because I'll tweet it at on you, it. brother. Okay, guys, I really got to go. I'm going to be late. But... All right, man. All right, peace hey, all right, guys. Hey, thanks for coming on uh, our show, guys. And, uh, you know, I'll let you go, Jackson. You know, I want to say thanks for coming on, you know. Thanks for having me, really man. This, awesome. was a, this was a blast. <laughs> all right. And then, you know, I'll get your uh, uh, info and I'll leave it in the description so they can come and check out your channel and follow your channel. Make sure you guys, when you guys go there, follow Jackson's channel. He's legit. You know, the stuff that he talks about is for real. It's good Thanks, to follow man. security stuff. The founder of Dogecoin, guys. All Thank right? you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jackson. See you, later. See you guys. All right. Thanks. All right. Take care, bro. And if you guys like these kind of videos, guys, these fun videos like this, you know, I know sometimes we take it seriously, you know, about different projects. But once in a while, we like to have fun on this channel, too. And if you guys like more of these videos, make sure you guys go to our uh, www.cryptocurrency.market slash newsletter and subscribe to our newsletter because we'll be sending out these videos to you guys and letting everyone know whenever we have people like Jackson Palmer on, all right? So thanks for watching this video, guys, and I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video, and this will conclude the live broadcast.